Okay, so at Hunter Bible Church, we have been renting since 1989. We've rented something like 25 or 26 venues, and we're buying a building under God. Let me give you our, our four big reasons. The first big reason is we want a place that people in Newcastle will recognize as somewhere that they can go and hear the gospel. And only a building that actually has visibility and that people can get to, they'll see it and they'll go, that's where I can hear the gospel. The second thing is, we want a building that's fit for purpose. As we grow, we have different needs to what a school does. And we want a building where the meeting space works, where the kids' spaces work, where we can take people who aren't Christian and it's comfortable and it's warm. And a building that's fit for purpose can do that. The third thing is, we want a building that we can give to the next generation. As Christians, we're hoping Jesus will return now. But if he doesn't return, our job is to think about where will the next generation preach the gospel from? And if we can, providing them a platform, a building to do it from is really important. And that's especially important because the fourth thing is our culture is moving away from Christianity and it's becoming hostile to Christianity, which means that places like schools in 15 years time, we don't have a guarantee that we'll be able to use them. In fact, if anything, we have a guarantee that we probably won't be able to use them. We're moving in the direction of an, an opposition to Christianity. Those are the four big reasons why we think it's worth investing the time and the money and the energy into getting a building. We have church at one school, we have a kids club at another school, and we've got offices at another place. Uh, we'd love to bring that all together. Uh, Ministry is hard as it is. Uh, having a building just makes it a little bit easier in some ways. For example, we, we don't just do ministry on Sundays. If it was just about Sundays, uh, you know, we do ministry all week long. And having that permanent presence where we can do so much more is a huge help. So as a church, we've been looking for four years. We've been renting. By the way, we're also throwing money away. We're paying, well, we pay about $70,000 a year. And we, we get that for one day a week. Also, one thing I do want to say is our best people always volunteer. So our best people are on set up pack up, tidy up, uh, we'd love them to just do people work. If we have our own presence, our own facility, they're not going to come and set up and pack up. They're going to come and meet people and bring people to church. Uh, why would a church consider having a building? Uh, well, two things. One, a permanent location says a lot to a local community. It says that you're here and you're here to, uh, to care for them, uh, you're here to support them, you're actually for the community. So having a permanent location says to a community, we're here for the, for the long haul. Uh, the second thing, there's just a pragmatic reason. Uh, I've seen churches grow at least 10 to 15% just by moving into a permanent facility. Uh, whatever that reason, psycho psychologically, uh, having access to greater space, uh, having access 24-7, you know, so during the week, uh, it just leads to uh, improved uh, preaching of the gospel in a local community. I'll give you a bunch of reasons quickly. Uh, many of them the same reason why you go from renting as uh, just in your house to buying because you get um, a safety so you're no longer at risk of being kicked out by a landlord who's unhappy about what you're doing and that's coming down the pipeline for all of us as churches you get uh, stability you've actually now got a space that you can create and structure around what you need it to do so you've got flexibility you can use it how you want to use it uh, you can actually now make it work for your ministries in a really sharp, clear way, in a way that public spaces used by own by others you can't quite do. Uh, you can um, have a home. There is something quite powerful about just as humans, we're embodied, we're real people, we're physical people. To actually have a place that's our home physically, which we can kind of come to and make our own, is really quite powerful just emotionally for us uh, as people. We have seen more people come to faith because we've got their own building. Uh, we were in school halls for 13 years. We now have our own church. Uh, people actually see us as not blow-ins, but people who are investing in this region. Uh, and that really speaks powerfully to them that we actually care about the region. We're here for good. We're here to stay. And people are drawn to our ministries because we actually have a footprint there. So for us, it's been gospel growth. It's been a real power in it all. We've been uh, renting facilities for church now for over 12 years, about to head into a building project uh, to help us uh, not have to set up and pack down all the time. 
and also uh, because we're constantly making second best choices when we're in rented facilities and we're looking forward to a purpose-built facility so we can keep making disciples who make disciples. We've been uh, renting at the school for 16 years uh, and we're hoping to start building in the next two months. Uh, that's been a long process for us. But why did we decide to build? Um, one of the big triggers was we were just um, maxing out the resources that we had both at the school and in the local community facilities. So we're just trying to, we're finding it hard to find places to rent. Uh, and we just found, find that there's so much energy and effort into set up, pack down. As we get a bit bigger, we just can't run meetings as professionally as we need to, because we just can't control the environment as much as we'd like to. Uh, and the other thing was just pressure from the school. So we've been told certain topics we're not allowed to speak on, like a biblical definition of marriage, homosexuality, sex outside of marriage. We've been told if we speak on those things, we risk being kicked out of the school. Uh, and we just know that that's a trend of where things are heading. And so we think this is a great way to future-proof uh, what we're doing. Uh, and we really want the Ministry Centre to be a hub, a vital hub where people know, yeah, that's where the lakes is and where we can really reach out to our community from there. So we're really excited and pumped to be at this point. You. Uh, we've been meeting there for 12 years in a high school and we're in the process of we've raised money and now looking to buy land to build. Uh, there's lots of really good reasons why to do that. Uh, one of the things is not being dependent on landlords. Uh, we were kicked out of our summer program six weeks before that. We couldn't find another place to go to. Uh, we put out 10,000 or 20,000 flyers that had to get rebadged. Um, so that was a really significant thing to not be dependent on landlords and particularly connected to that is the issue with councils and the political climate and whether we're actually going to be able to continue to get council places to meet plus also schools and if they're going to continue to allow us to do that to the future. And so that was a strong impetus. But the other thing is actually also having um, a place where we're not we're visible to the community, having a presence in the community, not just a Sunday when we pop up and go down, but being there much longer. Um, so what are some other things? We, we also um, want to provide something not just for us, but for our kids and grandkids. Uh, look, I, I think it's great for us to be thinking about uh, planting churches, but churches need to be able to meet somewhere. And it's becoming more and more difficult. We are getting knocked back from schools. We're being told that uh, public buildings are not the place for churches. And so if we've got the opportunity to be building or buying properties where we can have a center for gospel ministry, uh, I think it's important that we're doing that not only uh, for our own sake and not only for immediate needs, but if we invest, and it's going to be costly, if we invest now, then we're providing a legacy for ongoing ministry. Some of us have met over the years in old church buildings. Someone built them. Someone paid for them. Someone saw that if they do that hard work now, then it's going to set up Christians to have a place to meet in the future. And I want to encourage us to think about our grandkids, uh, to think about the wider community and what we can do uh, when we invest in some properties. Don't lose sight of the gospel, but let this help us with our gospel ministry.